Okay, in this video we're going to talk about AWS CloudFront, um, what it is, why it's useful, and then we're going to set up a CloudFront distribution um, on AWS just to show how it works. All right, so let's just start with some theory. So what CloudFront is, it's a content delivery network or CDN, and it basically allows, um, it allows you to improve performance for your content. A lot of it is going to be for S3 content stored in, um, in S3 buckets. And as you can see here in the diagram, you can have a bucket in one place of the world and you, your users can be in a totally different place in the world, but through, the, through CloudFront, they can access that content in a more, uh, in a closer location. So the latency will be a lot, uh, will be a lot uh, better. And so that way they, you can improve the performance of your applications. So there's right now, as of, as of this recording, there's 216 points of presence that Amazon has, uh, which includes 42 countries. Uh, it's popular with S3 caching, uh, but you can also use it for EC2 load balancing as well. Uh, you, it also protects you against uh, denial, distributed denial of service attacks, or DDoS, and it, it supports SSL encryption, and you can use HTTPS so to distribute your content. So for, um, for this tutorial, we're going to create an S3 bucket. We're going to create a CloudFront distribution. And then what we're going to do is we're, we're, we're going to limit the uh, S3 bucket to only be accessible through CloudFront. So this is important. So you don't want people accessing the bucket directly, but only through CloudFront. All right, so without further ado, so let's go into here. So this is an S3 bucket that I already created um, ahead of time. It's just a very simple bucket. There's no, um, there's no big um, properties on it right now. I could set it up with other things um, like, you know, website hosting. And so I didn't, it, and I, 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 all I did was give, give it versioning and there's nothing public in this bucket. So everything is turned off for public access. So you can't just, access any of anything here. So for instance, if I try to access this index HTML file, I'm going to get an access denied right here. So I can't do that. So I have this bucket set up and what I can do here is I'm going to go through the steps of setting up the distribution. So here you can do a web distribution or RTMP. This is if you want to stream um, other media. Uh, I'm just going to do a web distribution. So here is where you will see your bucket. So my bucket is right there. So you would select your bucket or you could, as you can see, you could, you could select a load balancer too. So you could cache requests or you could have more presence in the world for any content that you serve through a load balancer too. So we're just going to do an S3 bucket like this and it's going to give you the origin ID. Now, this is the important part, restrict bucket access. So by default, it's no. But if you if you look here, if you want to require users to always access S3 through the CloudFront URLs, click yes. So we're going to click yes. And then it's going to ask us about uh, identity. So then we're going to say create a new identity. It's going to just create, I'm going to show you later where this identity is. And then, um, we could leave the rest the same. Oh, the um, the read permissions, you're going to say yes. So that way you will update the bucket policy. And I'll show you how CloudFront automatically updates the bucket policy. Uh, the rest, um, you want to let here, this is actually important. You want to redirect HTTP to HTTPS. So that way all your requests are going to be um, over SSL. The rest we could leave. And everything else we can leave as is, and we would just create our distribution. So what I've done is, it's gonna take a bit of time to create, so I've already created one before, this one right here. And what we have here is after it's created under origin access identity, you're gonna see this access identity for that uh, distribution. And then what I wanna show you is in S3, if we go to our bucket policy, so right here, 
So yeah, this was actually automatically created by CloudFront. So CloudFront creates this policy where it says, okay, only, only this access identity, which this E3A3Q, which should match with this one right here, E3A3Q right there. So only that, only that um, identity or principle, only they can access this bucket. So right now they can do get object and then we can, they can do everything inside that bucket. So this is the important part. So um, CloudFront creates that for you. And that's why I said, yes, update the policy uh, for the bucket. So now we have this policy created. We have the distribution right here. So now we can access the content. So what I want to do is I just want to access the index HTML page, which should just load a very simple website right here. And if I go back to the distribution, It'll give me an endpoint, so right here, that I can use. But if I just try and use that, you're going to see I can't just access it directly like this because it's going to say access denied. So the reason is because I'm not accessing any objects. So if I just do slash index.html, it should load. So there's my website right now. Cool. So now it loads the website with uh, JPEG. If I wanted to access the JPEG directly, hello underscore world dot jpeg I could do that as well there it is and that's it and now I have a CloudFront distribution for my s3 content